Okay, everyone, I am super excited to be on this side of the microphone chatting with Stacy today. Stacy has been my coach for over a year and working with you, as you know, has really transformed my life and my business. And so having you on and being able to pick your brain and people ask me all the time, where do you go for advice? Who do you follow? It, most of it comes from you. So thank you so much for being here. It is thank a treat. You. I'm so excited. Yeah. And I was thinking like, we've been on podcasts together actually a lot, but you're right. Like typically um, it's in a different setting. So this is going to be fun. Like, I don't know what direction you're heading or where you're going, but I'm an open book. So I'm happy to share whatever you want. And that's what I love about you. And so one of the things that really caught my eye and why I started following you as I was looking to grow my business, you know, so we connect with people that we feel we resonate with. So you are a mom, you're working from home, you're juggling all the things, but you are like no nonsense, hyper productive. The amount of content learning education that you were putting out, I consider myself a a productive and well-structured person, but I was like, okay, I've got things to learn from her. <laughs> um, and so while you've been an amazing business coach, you also do such a great job at sharing with us real life. How do you fit it all in? So I'd love to kind of journey back with your first business before being a mom. Um, and what was that like for you having been a business owner and then now introducing motherhood? Yeah. What changes did that bring for you? It's so crazy. So when I, I was an entrepreneur for 10 years before I ever had kids and oh, you, you know, I, I didn't know how good I had it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. I'm like, what was I thinking? I was wasting so much time. I could have been doing this and I could have been doing that. And you just don't know yeah. until they're here. And you're like, wow, this is different. We just got a puppy. I know you did too. And it's like, oh my goodness, we just had a third baby. And I had no idea that was happening. <laughs> Now I, I feel of course, like I, I scheduled, I'm like, go. here's going to be the puppy schedule <laughs> yeah. that is not working for the puppies. <laughs> We're learning new ones. Oh every day. man. Yeah. So I, and here's the thing. I think you always have it good until you don't realize, okay, and now we have this and now yeah. we have COVID and now we, you know, it's, yep. you just have to really, I think, take full advantage of where you are currently today, because you just never know what your next big, you know, obstacle is going to be. So I think for me, it was, uh, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I had this idea in my head. And um, actually, I think too, the first time that my first, I, I actually kept her home for 18 months. And I had all these ideas in my head that I should be watching her because mm -hmm. I work from home and everybody's going to expect me to watch her. And I mean, 18 months is a lot. I mean, that's all. Oh, and it's like the hardest part in the beginning. And I just kept like making myself like try to be good at both. And finally, it was just like, I kind of blew up at 18 months. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, I can't run a million dollar business and take care of a baby full time. And my husband at the time was on the Milwaukee SWAT team. So his schedule was all over the place. So I was just like having to do all the things. So I think for me, it was just really being comfortable and okay of saying, this is what my journey is going to look like. I'm not saying you can't take care of a baby and run a million dollar business. I'm saying it wasn't for me. <laughs> I yeah. had to figure out like what felt good and what I like. And I think I was just feeling bad at everything. You know, I, I wasn't feeling great at the business. I wasn't feeling great at being a mom and separating the two really helped me be better at both. Oh, I feel I relate to that so much. It was a very, very similar for me. And I've met some women that I work with who truly are, you know, the full-time caregivers while, you know, raising babies and businesses at the same time. And I find for some, it doubles their fuel. Like they get such joy and passion out of that. For me, I have to have the separation because otherwise I just, I feel like I'm conflicting two things at the same time. Um, and I think it's important for, for women to know there is no one right way. You know, totally. I mean, I like, do what works for you. <laughs> me having Tanner home with me for those 18 months, it wasn't because I wanted to, it was because I felt people expected me to. So if yeah. you want to do it, like that's why you do whatever it is you've chosen to do, right? So it has to fit for you. Oh, I love that. And I appreciate the honesty because I think, you know, people feel funny about saying that. So knowing now that, you know, you, I think you and I have similar work hours, you kind of work mostly during the school day and then it ends. Do you use similar systems and processes to manage home life versus work life? Or are they kind of two separate 
places of management when it comes to kind of yeah. organizing your time and all of that? So mine is just all together. I okay. have one calendar, one email. It does feel a little weird that like my school teach my kid's school teacher emails the, you know, my email at stacytosha.com. Like, I'm always like, are they like checking me out to see like, what is she doing? <laughs> I've said the same thing. But I'm like, no, I don't care. I want it right. all together because to me, this is my life, right? So I don't want one calendar here and one calendar there. So I personally have everything together. Um, even in my Google calendar, little reminders will say, turn in their book it, like their book it's due at the end of the month. So, I mean, whoever is working with me, my assistant, she's seeing a little bit of personal, a little bit of, it's just, she's an extension of me. So it's like, whatever I have to get done, please help me do this. But yeah, I try to do most of it all together. Yeah. There's, I get questions a lot from people on, okay, where do I have a task list for work and then keep a separate one from home. And the advice I'll usually give people again, I'm like, you got to figure out what works for you. But if you're, you know, when I was still full-time outside the home corporate and then had motherhood, I had two separate ones because my work hours were Uber, you know, nine to five, two yeah. very different lives. But then when I moved more into the entrepreneurial world, like it all meshes together. I'm juggling work, school, home. And so for me, having one central place, that's all of it yeah. seems to work well. Um, yeah. But I mean, if you decide, okay, I need to have two, but you keep forgetting about the other calendar, <laughs> That yeah. is probably not working for you. And I think I used to do that. I was like, oh no, this doesn't make sense. And then I would forget about like the personal calendar versus to me, it's just what, what is going on in my world today, this week, this month. Now, how do you share that with your spouse? Is it a shared Google calendar? Yep. So he yeah, can okay. see it. Um, he doesn't really add things on. If anything, I want him to see what's going on. Isn't that funny? I'm like, don't touch Same. it. <laughs> Do not touch it. You are allowed to look at it, but that is it. Um, so, because it's just, you know, like yeah, it's oh, a yeah. lot, right? Yeah. So if anything, he gets to look at it because he has to decide if he's out with his friends or his friends say, Hey, do you want to go to lunch? Or do you want to, he has to see, well, what does she have going on? And what does this look like? Do I need to be picking up the kids or is this, is this fine? So he does need to see my out of town. But then for the most part, his schedule is nothing like mine. So he has his own calendar. I actually don't look at his, which is funny. Yeah. I've, I've never seen my. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm like, am I like the worst wife that I don't know what his does, but I really do think like we're in a situation where it's kind of revolving around my schedule. Right. And he yeah. is really making sure that I'm able to do what needs to happen. But then obviously when the work day's done, it's like, now it's family time. We're all together. Yeah. And I'll do a, I send a monthly email at the start of every month, email to my husband, like highlights for the next 60 days. Just want to make it. sure it's on your, on your radar, you know, if it's a half day or something like that. So as your, well, multiple businesses started growing, where did you zero in to start outsourcing and delegating help? Cause people are always, it's always, and I was so nervous too. Like that first time you say, I'm going to let go of this and outsource it. Yeah. What tips do you have or suggestions on how to identify where to start getting outside help? Is this personally or professionally? Or Either both? or. Okay. Yeah. Cause I think sometimes the personal, I, I should have done that sooner. Yes. I realize now that I did. Yeah. I think there's like this also like, I'm going to feel silly saying I have an assistant and I would not want my sisters to know, or my mom to know, like they would be like, who does she think she is that she has? Right. Like, right. So I also think that took me a lot longer too, because I thought I, I wouldn't even tell people that I had somebody helping clean the home. And like, I think I just felt like, who, who do I think I am? Or people yeah. would think I would, that they would think that. So I think I got more help professionally, which still relieves so much, mm -hmm. but I will say that, you know, on the weekend, if you've worked hard all week and then on the weekend, you are now like, I moved into my house seven or six years ago. Like my husband and I landscaped the entire, we built it. So we had no landscaping. So we built all of the landscaping. And when I look outside and I see my landscaping, I'm thinking, what was I thinking? Like, why would I, why, why did I, I take that? every weekend to just burn myself out when I should have been outsourcing some of these things? Um, so I think it is kind of how you grow up and the environment you're in, you know, if you, yeah. I'm in a, like a small country town in Wisconsin, there is very, you know, people are like, do it yourself kind of people. Um, everybody does their own landscaping. It's like, it's just things like that where it just didn't cross my mind. But I think in business, I actually went to a conference, uh, when I was 21 
And in that room, this man shared everything about delegation. And if you want to do this, you are going to need help. And I'm a very good student. Like I want to be the rule follower. If you tell me to do it, I'm going to do it. And I know you're like that too. And, but that's what has really helped me, I think, gain that momentum and that success. So when he said delegate, I went home immediately and I hired some dance teachers to get in my studio. So I have two performing arts academies and I hired a front desk person. Now, what I will say is I hired a 16 year old high school kid to work the phones and looking back, I'm thinking this is like sales <laughs> and I have just given this person's first job to answer. I mean, it was just the craziest thing. So you just don't know yeah. until you start doing it. But as you start to do it, you're going to start to see like, where are very valuable roles and where are roles behind the scenes that anybody could do that maybe could be a lower pay scale versus like, whoa, this is a sales role. Like this person needs to really know what she's doing, be able to convert and be paid well for it when it happens. So lots of messiness. I mean, now I have like 50, 60 employees in the uh, performing arts academies. And then I think we have, we just hired three people. So I think we have maybe 15 in foot traffic. Now I feel pretty good, but man, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, I was nervous in those interviews. Like I was probably more nervous than they were and even right. though they were coming. Um, so yeah, I think little by little. And then I started to get addicted because I'm going, whoa, they just took all that off my plate. I'm now able to do whatever else is really moving the needle, focus on the marketing, focus on training the team. And all of a sudden it was like, I can't, I mean, I just told you, I just hired three people last week and we already have messaged our recruiter to say, okay, here's the next position we want. Because we know that that time wealth, getting it off of my plate and now getting it off of my team's plate, right? So my yeah. team members will get so maxed out that I'm now going, how do I help Sarah stay in her zone of genius and hire somebody kind of under her to assist her in those roles. So I don't even know what your question was anymore. I've just been rambling. We're just talking about how you got into outsourcing, okay. like just what, how you make that decision. Yeah. So where do I start with that? I, so I started with teachers as I was the technician. And then I started with the person answering the phones, more like admin mm -hmm. in the online business. I immediately hired a virtual assistant and a social media manager. So I think for me now looking at that, Absolutely. I also think like an executive assistant, I was very unclear of the difference between executive assistant and a personal assistant. I always thought an assistant was like the girl that picked up your dry cleaning and things like that. Mm -hmm. But an executive assistant is not, they don't do personal things. Right. They work for you in the business. And now looking back at what I really understand an executive assistant is, I should have had one 15 years ago. Right. Right. So I think that's probably one of the biggest roles you can eventually hire, but it's, it's not a minimum wage job. Like this is somebody who's going to be learning from you, eventually doing the things you're doing. It's a very high level job. So, um, I would say definitely consider looking at some of those of like the next steps for you. What feels best? What do you want to get off your plate? Social media, I am not a social media girl. So it's like, I have got to get somebody fast. And that was why it was one of my first hires. Well, you took us through one of our mastermind exercises just a couple months ago. And it was life-changing for me, mm -hmm. having us write down like what feels heavy yes. for you right now. And it was to cross both work and business. And it's one of the things I noticed when I love working in groups such as the mastermind you've built and surrounding myself with women like that, because we're all very positive. We're growth. We're focusing on that, that sometimes we don't take the time to say, we don't want to talk about the yuck. So we just kind of avoid it. But having gone through that, I remember reading back to you. One of the first things I wrote was like cleaning my house. Yeah. And it was, you know, when you were talking about that weekend, I was I'm literally spending over half of my two days off cleaning. And so that yeah. was the, my biggest takeaway here. I'm at this great business mastermind, but it was life-changing to go sit down with my family that next week and say, this has got to go. What are we doing about it? Mm -hmm. And a month and later, so we yeah, finally are, now outsourced yes. it. And it's like, when you find the right person, they love it. Like literally they love it. And, um, it's just something where somebody else should be doing that. They were born to do that role, right? Yeah. And, and it's their business and this yes. is what they've decided to do. And even, and I went through all the same stuff of, I should be, you know, because I have the time I should be doing it. Who do I think I am? All of that. I'm well, really now free I on Saturday, you know, mm -hmm. but the energy I bring to work on Monday morning now is completely different Yeah, because I'm not, 
I'm getting all that downtime on the weekend. And so that has been an area I know you've been, I, I, so many women will act like, oh, I do it all. And they're not honest about, no, I get help here, there, and there. And so having you share that with us has been great for me to say, no, let go, Megan. And, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have to be wonder women. All well, the time. <laughs> and it was what felt heavy to you. Maybe mm -hmm. for somebody listening, they're like, I actually love cleaning. Like there is somebody I know, but there is somebody that loves it. Who's like, no, like folding laundry. I listen to music. Okay, great. Then you keep that on your plate. Yeah. What feels heavy to you? Yeah. Yeah. That, and then the cooking. So I'd get the little meal service now a couple times a month and it, it's Amazing. great. So for any, any women out there that are maybe thinking about starting a business or have started one already, where would you encourage them from a time management perspective mm -hmm. to focus their energies first? Cause I think we all yeah. look at the big shiny, I need to build a website. I need to whatever, <sighs> but it's oftentimes not not the best use of our time. Yeah, for sure. We we just start doing a lot of stuff and then we're so busy doing that we don't actually assess what just happened. Mm, so especially when yeah. you're, I'll ask this question in one of my boot camps. I'll say, if you were to stop posting on social media for the next seven days, how many of you would even notice a difference in your bank account? And people will say, you're right. No, I won't notice. Or somebody will say, I have no idea. Like I literally mm. don't even know if my social media is doing anything for me yet. It's like, you don't miss a day, you keep doing it, right? And I would say like, give yourself that white space to actually assess what you've been doing to see what is actually working. No, I do not think you need to go buy a $5,000 fancy website. Um, you do not need the perfect logo that takes you six months to decide between like the pink shade with the dark color versus the light shade versus the few shots. Like, listen, you are getting way more particular than anybody else will. Yeah. You can make, you should, and I should say you could and should get your logo designed in like an hour. Like that is how minimal those things are, but people believe it's everything, right? Yep. We have to get you monetizing as fast as possible. I actually just interviewed somebody who helps with social media for Taylor Swift, Rihanna, people like that. And I was like picking his brain like crazy. And I, and I said like, where should people get started? And he said, well, if you do not, if you're not generating income where you like need to make money today, your first thing you're doing, do not do brand awareness. Do not try to get more visibility. You need to figure out how you're going to make money. And once you're making money, then you start getting brand awareness. Then you start get, getting visibility, start enhancing your social media and getting on all the platforms. So I think we just do it a little bit backwards. We think, oh, I've got to have my social media profiles all over. I've got to get on Twitter. I've got it. And it's like, you don't even go on Twitter, right? It's like, you don't even know how to use Twitter. And yet you're like building out the Twitter platform. So I think just simplify, get started small, get started with just lean, right? Lean, mm -hmm. and then start watching it and start doing those tests of, do I think this is working? Do I not? So I think that's my biggest advice is don't do all the things right away. Just start really, really small, one step at a time. Yeah. And that whole circling back and tracking the results, that was something, I mean, and I love numbers, but even I get so excited about some sets of numbers, I'd, I don't enjoy the going back and tracking how it worked, but learning how to do that has been very eye-opening to understand things I thought were really valuable use of my time were not. Or like all. everybody's doing it. So then you should do it too. So you just assume I should keep doing it, but you're not looking at the results to see if it's doing anything for you. Yeah. So maybe you don't love the tracking or you don't love the numbers, somebody listening, but maybe that's something your VA could be presenting to you, right? Yep. Here are the top social media posts. Here are your most liked comments, shares, et cetera. I think we should do more of this, or I notice this isn't working. Maybe we talk about this, right? Put that on somebody else's plate because it's so incredibly important that if you're not doing it, somebody else has to. Yeah. And then they can net it out for you. Cause like I'm, yeah. I'm old. So I still like Facebook, Instagram. I, I I outsource that, okay. but what's great is then my social media manager every month can say, here's what we tried. Here's, here's the numbers. Do you want us to keep doing this or not? And so from that aspect, I'm like, okay, now I like this part of it. Yeah. Um, but again, you, that was a service. I know you gave through your foot traffic formula program was teaching us how to go hire an actual social media manager. That was because I, mean, I didn't, because it was a scary thing to go do. It's the most important thing possible when I'm teaching people how to drive traffic to whatever it is they're selling, 
I also don't believe that you should be the person doing your social media because it's one of those things that first can be a full-time job. Plus we actually have two social media managers right now, full-time, both of them. That's how much work there is to do. So to me, get somebody who can jump in for you five hours a week, right? Very, very part-time. And as you start to get results on what's working and you start bringing more money in, then you say, Hey, would you like to start working 10 hours a week? Hey, would you, Hey, you know what? We're actually going to turn this full-time. Are you interested? Right? Yep. So I think just start little, start looking at what's actually happening and you'll start to see that revenue coming in. Oh, so smart. All right. So one final question, what would you give our listeners as like your number one time management tip? Hmm. I think just letting it go and getting it on somebody else's plate and not thinking like, but she really can't do it like me or like, she'll never be able to do it like me. I literally used to think no one is going to be able to understand how to book my airfare. Like I am, I do it in a certain way. Sometimes I'm looking at price. Sometimes I'm looking at time. Like they're never going to be able to do it. And just talking through, I purchased airfare and I recorded myself and I talked out loud and I said, okay, so I don't like this time because I would never want to wake up at this time and have to rush there. And I don't really like flying into the O'Hare airport. So I'm going to do Milwaukee. And as I was doing it, I then passed the video to my executive assistant. And I said, Hey, I've got two trips coming up. Do not book it, but tell me what you think you would do based off of what I've said. She nailed both of them. Oh, that's smart. We just think nobody can do it like us, but it's like, you do have a system. It's just probably in your head. So if we can strip out whatever you would say to yourself in your head and get it into a video for them to see, everything can be taught you guys. I mean, it's, it's just so crazy that we believe like no one can do it or understand the way that I do it. I promise you somebody like your dream team is waiting for you. Absolutely. And they might even do it better. My VA, yes. I recorded something to get it off my plate and trip. Actually, like, you know, you could have done it this way and like saved all this time. It's like, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do it that way. Then. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I would love, I always recommend your boot camp to anybody who is new in business, starting out wanting to grow their business, where can people get info on all the latest and greatest going on? Yes. So we do a monthly boot camp um, that is, and please mention Megan's name when you, if you join it, um, but it's a five day live boot camp with me where I teach 10 free or low cost ways to drive more traffic. So I'm really diving into social media, what you should be spending your time on, what you should get off your plate. Um, it is a phenomenal five days together and it's $17. So a no, yeah, no brainer. No oh my goodness. Yes. Um, so you can go directly to five actually is, what is it? If you go to five day traffic bootcamp.com, everything, you'll see everything there. And then when you join us, please make sure to mention Megan's name. I want to know that she came from your amazing circle. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing. And then the foot traffic podcast is probably the next best place. Yeah. You, and definitely dive into the podcast. I'll have all of that in the show notes below. So everyone will be able to go grab that. But again, thank you for being such a big part of my life over more than the last year. And I, can finally say we actually get to meet face to face in a couple. Yes, weeks. I know. I'm so I'm excited so to see excited you. Well, and I want to tell everybody listening too. you are listening to the right person. Megan is a doer. She is a go getter. She takes action like you found a great person. So I really, really want them to know that like there's a lot of people out there that consume, but they don't implement and you are not that way at all. You practice what you preach. So thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Such a treat. Thank you so much, Stacey.